You still here, Mr. Sword? Until after the holidays. Mm -hmm. The agency doesn't miss you? Well, the agency has a bit of a soft spot for Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. How politically correct. Oh, and civilized. Yes, and very wasteful of the taxpayers' money. I think I will ask Senator Blodgett to have his committee look into that. All right, Senator Blodgett. I believe one of your court and electronics packs just handed him a nice, cool 45K for his last re-election campaign. Political contributions are still perfectly legal, Mr. Sword. Indeed they are, unless said contributor just lands a fat government contract 60 days later. Opal isn't home. I'm busy. Why don't you leave? Because you're like family. Better still, why don't you go to your own family? Stop sponging off Opal. Get the hell away from me. Not until I solve the mystery. What mystery is that, pray? How you get such a nice, even, close shave without using a mirror? Get out. Really? I'm intrigued. What are you doing? It's enough of the vampire jokes. Halloween's over. Oh, you mean you do use a mirror? You mean you can actually look yourself in the face without dying of shame? Could you get the hell out of my house? It's not your house yet. I heard everything you just said as your lawyer. But I got a news flash for you, Cortland. Opal's gonna win this war. Have you lost your my, 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 Adrian Sword? Yes, your son. Well, you know, just a few weeks ago, here you were green eyed telling me I was making moves on Adrian, and now all of a sudden you're telling me. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Believe me, you, you really are some piece of work. I am not joking, Opal. Yeah, well, then you better take a, a break from some severe overwork because you have definitely left reality somewhere in the next county. No, no, you can deny it all you want, but I am sure of this. You snapped! All right. First, there is your total devotion to Adrian's every need. The man broke his ankle in my home. Yeah, but, but he didn't have to recuperate there. Well, in my book, he did, yes. You let him advise you. You let him protect you. That is his profession. You are his cook. You facilitate his social life. Facilitate his social life? Where are you getting all this? And you have an incredible rapport with him. Well, why wouldn't I have an incredible record, rapport with him? I mean, he is a nifty guy. Yeah, he is, and, and you're right. At first, I did think that you had some sort of romantic notion about it. Yeah, which was your first indication that the butter had slipped off your pancakes. But then, the photo of his father slipped out of your book. I explained that. Oh, come on, Opal. What are the chances that you would keep a picture of a man for 30 years just because he had done some sort of kindness to you? Well, people <clears throat> keep... Pictures of their kindergarten teachers, it doesn't mean they're harboring some deep, dark secrets about learning the alphabet. No, 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 but, but it was the way that you reacted when you found out that the man in the picture was Adrian's father. Well, I was astounded by the coincidence, yeah, weren't you? Y yes, but you, Opal, are obsessed with his welfare. As a friend, Belinda, as a friend, you know what that means? I mean, here you are, what, you're trying to read my concern for Avery Adrian as some proof that I am his mother? Well, you are going way, way out in left oh, field oh, here, okay, okay, Dale. Okay, you're Theory fit the facts. One no. more thing, then. All right? If you're, you're just not gonna let this go, are you? If what happened between you and Frank so long ago was just some random act of kindness done for by a man to a helpless woman, then why did you freak out so much when you heard that he had dropped by? I did not freak. Yes, you did, Opal. I saw you. Well, maybe I had a strong reaction, yes, but that's because it was stirring up all kinds of um, memories about being on the run from Ray Gardner. No, I, I truly believe that memories were stirred up, but I don't think they had a thing to do with Ray Gardner. What, are you telling me what's going on in my heart and my head now? I am telling you that I believe that you are Adrian's mother. And I believe that you think that. I do. Well, you are just one 
wacko lawyer, Belinda Kiefer. And so help me, God, I will sue you for, for libel and slander and desecration of character, anything it takes to get you disbarred if you so much as whisper a word of that lie to another human being. It's true, isn't it? I mean it. I mean it, Belinda. If you tell another living soul, I will skin you alive. I'm right. I'm not kidding about this. I'm not kidding. All this time I thought that you were compassionate, decent, kind. That you would deny your son just to avoid Stop admitting it. that you slept with a black man? If I didn't love Adrian, I would have you locked in Palmer's private room and throw away the key. Love, Adrian. So much breaks my heart just to look at him. Every time I see his daddy's kind, sweet soul in his eyes, then why don't you tell him that you're his mother? Don't you think? I have been aching to take him in my arms and tell him. Ever since I realized that he is my baby boy. Adrian is the kind of son that any mother would be proud to claim as her own. He's smart and Handsome, kind, he's trustworthy, noble, he could go on and on. He's, well, I mean, heck, why don't I? He's, he's got a great sense of humor, he's got a huge heart, he's got style that doesn't quit. He's crackerjack at his job, which is one of the most impressive professions that there is. I mean, he is out saving the free world, making America proud. He's... Well, he's like that song, you know. Did you ever see a dream walking? Well, I did. From the minute we met, we connected. Him and me, he just charmed me right out of my socks. And then when I, I finally put the facts together that, and realized that this, this dream walking was my son, was the baby that I had given to his daddy to raise. Well, I just about fell apart. I, that this boy, grown into this exquisite creature without so much as a word from me. Just about ripped my heart out. And yet it makes me happy beyond all measuring at the same time. Giving away my baby was. It, it was the hardest thing that I have ever had to do. But I had no choice. I wasn't going to let that racist murderer, Ray Gardner, get his hands on him. I loved that baby. And I loved his daddy, who is to this day still the finest man I have ever. Mm -hmm had the good fortune to know. So no, I did not walk away from Adrian out of shame, no. I gave him away to protect him so as he'd be safe and cared for and have a chance at a, a good and, and happy life. 
Oh, God. What I wouldn't give to be able to just sit down with him and, and tell him all this, tell him how I have loved him and thought about him every single day. But you're not going to tell him. What, in ruin his life? I mean, haven't you been listening to a word I said? I, I gave him away so that he would have a life, a good life. I can't destroy that. But how, how will knowing who his real mother is hurt Adrian? You know, Belinda, for being a lawyer, you can be pretty naive sometimes. I mean, not only would that hurt Adrian, that would hurt the woman that raised him and the father that, that, that loves him. Everything that he has known to be his family for his whole life would just blow up right in his face. He might never forgive me. I mean, that would be some fine way to repay Frank and his wife for their wonderful job of raising him, wouldn't it? I mean, you can't just give somebody a gift and then waltz back in some 20 odd years later and say, oh, you know, I think I'll take that back now, can you? I mean, of course, of course, I would like the whole wide world to know that Adrian is my son, of course. But that never can happen. You understand that, don't you? I understand. Well, that's why you kind of promise never to tell anybody what you guessed. I understand. And I promise. Oh. Thank you. Well, you'd stop sneaking up on me. Oh, but wouldn't your Senator Blodgett be pleased to know that the agency is spending its funds on training so appropriately? I mean, besides, I'm a little injured and I got this close. What do you want from me, besides giving me a heart attack? Your signature. Now read it and sign. <laughs> You're demented. Palmer Cortland shall forthwith provide an accurate statement of all assets and holdings, cash and real property to his wife, Opal Cortland. <laughs> Further, if Palmer Cortland fails to divulge all assets, said assets shall, on discovery, immediately become the sole property of Opal Cortland. Really? Upon liquidation of real property, all proceeds shall be divided equally between Mr. and Mrs. Cortland. <laughs> Not in my lifetime. You know, Cortland, that life of yours is going to be sh sadly shortened unless you sign this and agree to give Mrs. Cortland a divorce without attempting to defame her or impeach her character or sick those stupid detectives of yours on her. Do I make myself clear? We could have done that, Mrs. Fargay. Oh, call me my dog. Uh, listen, I put some flannel sheets in my bed because I love flannel sheets when it gets chilly, don't you? Yes, I do. That was very thoughtful. And Julian wasn't here, so, well, I just finished it. But don't worry, I will not barge into your room again. I was not worried about that. So you haven't seen Julian in a while? Uh, no, she hasn't been here for a few hours. Oh, wait a minute. She left. Hello. Uh -huh. Well, thank you. Welcome. It's all there, your 50,000. What, no flowers? What? My new office, Jillian. You didn't bring me flowers or anything. 
David, you can count it if you want, but it's all there. I didn't need it. Ryan's assault charges were dropped. Well, good for him. He's one for two. Assault down, rape to go. Ryan will not be charged for rape because he's not a rapist. You know, your devotion is touching, Jillian. Too bad you didn't have any left for me. Especially after everything that we've meant to one another. <sighs> David, I, I, I appreciate you helping me. I do, but... What happened last night and before can never happen again. I'm sorry. I will always think of you fondly, and I will always be grateful. Should I be expected to bow or kneel, perhaps? Tell me, Princess, what is the accepted protocol for a royal kiss-off? Don't make this more difficult than it has to be. Who is this more difficult for, Jillian? You or me? I have to get going. My husband is waiting for me. Oh, oh, I get it. This is more difficult for you. The born and bred princess turning to the lowly commoner. You're very well off, David. This is America, Jillian. Some of us had to work very hard to get to where we are. We self-made men come from humble beginnings. Certainly not the life of privilege you're accustomed to. Oh, I never thought you were beneath me. But you should be really proud of yourself. You captured the American dream. <laughs> well, you can never have too much money or too many toys. I came to you, David, because I thought I could trust you. I hope I still can. Can I? Are you certain that it's goodbye? Yes. I told you that I loved Ryan, and I think we might have a chance of getting back together again, and I will do anything to make that happen. Anything? <sighs> David, I'm sorry if I broke your heart, but you will get over me. Even the ambassador got over me, and he left his wife for me. <sighs> Never mind. I'm very sorry, and I will always be grateful. When will you ever learn, princess? <clears throat> yes, hello, this is Dr. David Hayward. Um, do you remember the discussion we had the other day about that proposal? Yes, that's right, the study of unborn children. Well, the kitchen is still standing, and so are you. Thank <laughs> you, Rod Serling's voiceover. This is not the Twilight Zone. I do cook, you know. Adam Chandler. <laughs> well, you, you, you made the sauce? Of course I made the sauce, from dried herbs. Oh, you really should consider getting some fresh herbs, you know. And in, in, in those bottles, how old? I, I saw oregano and depression glass over there. <laughs> how long have they been in your cupboard? You just stop this right now. I'm going to faint or something. Well, that's because you need something to eat. Here, eat. Now, here. Well, I don't get this. Men always want to cook for me and feed me. I, I, I do not cook. I create gastronomical experiences. If I have the proper tools and equipment, Ingredients, of course. Since when? Since I, all my life. I cooked for Stuart and Lottie after my mother died. And every once in a while when I go on a business trip over to Rome, I uh, manage to sneak off a little detour off to uh, my favorite cooking school outside of Tuscany. Adam, I was married to you. I never once saw you boil water for a cup of tea. Well, there were a lot of things we didn't discover about each other. I was always thought I'd uh, surprise you one morning. But that's the danger of thinking we have all the time in the world when we don't. That I have, I have the morning. There is the morning. I could order some things in tonight. Oh no, you don't. You don't have to stay the entire night. I, I, I'll be good. Isa, I am staying. I. Excuse me, uh, with your kind permission, I would like to stay. 
Well, but besides, we have we have this Mel Gibson film festival. What do you think? Huh? Should we start with uh, which lethal weapon do you want to start with, or should we just go through them in order? I just want to tell you something first. Sign it. You know, thanks again to the senator and his committee's appropriations. I know a thousand ways to offer a guy without a trace. You see, the corner would just simply roll it a stroke. My personal favorite, a heart attack. You have a choice. Which do you prefer? There's always choices. The man belongs behind bars, and I'm going to see I to it that he gets there. I thank you enough for doing this, but, you know, I think I can take care of this rascal with Belinda's help. Oh, you're going to need a lot more than Belinda to ace this guy. Palmer told his lawyers to drag out all your skeletons. He attempts to take Petey away from you, and he wants to definitely keep you away from his fortunes. After all the loving and caring between us, you never really love me, did you, Palmer? Don't really have room in that heart of yours for anything other than stolen art and money and power. Well, never mind. Because I'm going to win anyway. And you know why? Because I am in the right. And as for skeletons, dirt from my past, there ain't any, all right? I am not ashamed of one day in my life. Well, except maybe the day that I fell for you. Don't you worry, I'll be with you every step of the way. And you better keep that in mind. So, what do you think? Ooh, I still have the touch. of you, Jenny. Shall I open it now? Uh, no, you, you could wait till tomorrow morning if you'd rather. Fine, I'll, I'll just put it under the tree and do it first thing in the morning. Okay. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for inviting me to dinner tonight. I'm just glad that you could come. Sure. Greg, why don't you two have some eggnog? Mm. Um, I'd, I'd just like a ginger apple. Oh, well, come on. It's Christmas. No, I'd, I'd rather have a ginger ale, okay? <laughs> okay. One ginger ale coming up. Mom? Oh, nothing for me, dear. I guess I really better go check on dinner, if you'll excuse me, Jenny. Sure. Is there anything you'd like me to help you with? No, no. Mrs. Borg has everything under control. I'll just be a minute. Thanks. Okay. Greg, she's being so nice to me. Oh, why shouldn't she be? You're a very nice person. Well, and besides, you're my girl. Well, I still, I just can't get used to it. It's such a switch, you know. It's, it's like she finally accepts me all of a sudden. Well, Jenny, there is nothing for her to uh, disapprove of you about. You're just prejudiced, Mr. Nelson. Am I ever. <laughs> to us. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, Mrs. Borg says dinner is ready. <laughs> uh, Greg, why don't you escort Jenny into the dining room? Mm, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh -huh. And uh, will you carve the turkey, please? Uh-oh, I was afraid of that. <laughs> Oh, I'll get that. You go ahead and start carving. Okay, I'll be right great. with you. It'll give me time to practice on this thing. Hello? Uh, hello, Mrs. Nelson. This is Liza. Oh, yes, dear. Um, I, I was just calling to find out how your meeting went with Ray Gardner. Uh, did you see him? Uh, yes, I did, but I really can't talk now, dear. Jenny is here. Jenny? Yes. What's she doing there? Uh, she's having dinner with us. Why? What's wrong? Well, what's Liza, going on? Liza, really, I, there's no harm in being nice to the girl, especially if it's going to keep Craig happy. You, you mean, is Mr. Gardner opposed to the engagement? Yes, he is. Definitely. Well, that's marvelous. Well, 
Uh, what about Mrs. Garner? Does, she, does he have any effect on, on Mrs. Garner? Any influence at all? I believe so. That's fabulous. I can't wait to hear all about it. Yes, darling, I will tell you, but not now. Uh, they're waiting for me. I'll fill you in on it later. Uh, okay. Bye, Mrs. Garner. Oh, goodbye, darling. Mom, are you coming? I'll be right there, Greg. It's been nice getting to know you.